Good morning, viewers. Welcome to the session devotionals for this morning. Topic for this morning: engaging the principles of true worship and praise. Topic one more time: engaging the principles of true worship and praise. On that series, how to walk in jubilations and celebrations as a lifestyle. Post my humble scalp, look at King. Text taken from the book of Psalm chapter 67, from verse 30 down to 7. But let's pray for we Father, we thank you for the bread in our ministries. Father, we've come to hear from you this morning. We are speak to us and grant us understanding. Your word said in Psalm 119, verse 105, that word is a light to our feet and a lamp to our power. Father, let your word light our feet to greatness. Even this morning, in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Topic one more time engage in the principles of true worship and praise on the series how to work in jubilations and celebrations as a lifestyle. Host look at key text taken book of Psalm 67 from verse 3 down to 7 from verse 3. Let the people praise thee, O God, and all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. And in verse 5, let the people praise thee. You can say, let the people worship thee, O Lord, let all the people praise thee. He said, then the head in verse 6, shall ye lie increase and God, even our own God, shall bless us. And in verse 7, the last verse said, God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. May the Lord bless his word and grant us understanding in Jesus. And for that reading, Second Chronicles chapter 20, from verse 1 to 25, said it came to pass after after this also the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other side the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat and Judea to battle. And of course, in verse 2, the air came some and told Joshua, and of course, his heart feed him because he knew they would not fight this battle. And in verse 3, and Joshua feared and said to himself, Seek the Lord, proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And in verse 4, the Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And in the midst of waiting upon the Lord, the instruction came, You don't need to fight in this battle, go and fight on your behalf. And we saw that happen. When they said the people to begin to praise the name of the Lord, when they began to praise, the Lord said ambushment against the children of Ammon and Mortia, and everyone destroyed themselves. It was 22. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord said ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mortia, which will come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitant of Mortia, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitant of Seir, everyone had to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the wash tour, they looked, and of course there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. And it took them three days to gather the jewelries of gold and all the spoils of war. I pray as you engage the mystery of worship and prayer, the Lord will turn every battle to your victory in Jesus. In Isaiah 12, from verse 1 to 6 said, In that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wilt angry with me, thy anger is turned away. And thou comfortest me, said in verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son. He also is become my salvation. But he said, Therefore, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. Say, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. That means with joy of praise, with joy of worship, you will draw revelation out of heaven, said in verse 4. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among his people, make mention that his name is exalted. Verse 5 says, Sing unto the Lord, for he had done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Verse 3 said, Cry out, cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. John chapter 4, verse 21 to 24, our last for that reading, it said, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither. In this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. Verse 22 said, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23 said, For the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit in verse 24, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Lord grant you understanding of the subject in Jesus' name. Topic, one more time, engaging the principles of true worship and praise. One of the series, how to walk in jubilations and celebrations as a lifestyle. Host, look at key text, 
Psalm 67, 3 to 7. We'll write that for that in Second Chronicles, chapter 20, from 1 to 25. We'll see the story of Judah and Joshua right there, and Isaiah chapter 12, 1 to 6, and John chapter 4, 21 to 24, Jesus, and the adulterous woman that Jesus forgave her for all our sins. Please, at your leisure time, can read these scriptures again. I'm sure you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Thinking cap. True worship throws all bodies off and leads to endless celebrations. So I take that again. True worship throws all bodies off and leads to endless celebrations. Think about it. Today we'll look at the topic engaging the principles of true worship and praise on the teaching series on how to work in jubilations and celebrations as a lifestyle. By introduction, Let's know that the act of true worship and praise to God is an act of adoring God's supremacy and dominion. Our God is an indescribable divine supernatural being that every creature bows to. In fact, even the devil bows in adoration to God. So anytime we heartily worship and praise God, we are simply adoring and magnifying his supremacy and person and he's happy with us. Beloved, it's quite beautiful, pleasant, and joyful to worship and to praise God. Men who truly worship God and great in life. Think of Abraham, our father. Think of David. Think of Solomon. Among many, they ended up as great men because they are true worshippers and true praisers of God. Because in Genesis chapter 22, from verse 1 to 18, you can read the story of our father Abraham, how he went to worship the Lord with his son. The Lord said in verse 1, Genesis 21, verse 1, said it came to pass after this thing that the Lord did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, Take now thy son in verse 2, the only son Isaac, who thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a point of faith upon one of the mountains which I tell you. And of course, this is the child he waited for 75 years to get. And of course, he took the child and went out to the mountain to go and slay the child. The angel of the Lord calling said, Don't hurt that child. In verse 10, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel called out of heaven and said, Don't lay hands on the child now and know that fear is me. And he called again a second time and said, By myself, have I sworn, said the Lord. In verse 16, For because I have done this thing, I have no will tell thy son, the only son, that in blessing, verse 17, or blessing and multiplying, I will multiply thy seed of the stars of heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemy, said in verse 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because I have obeyed my voice. Another testimony, first Chronicles 29, verse 20 down to 28, talking about David. We saw him worship the Lord, and David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God, and all the congregation bless the God of their fathers, and bow down their head and worship the Lord and the King. And they sacrifice sacrifices unto the Lord in verse 21 and offered born offerings unto the Lord. On the morrow after they did even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams and a thousand lambs with their drinks, offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And did eat and drink before the Lord in that day. You can complete that scripture down to verse 28 because of time, please pardon me. First King chapter 3 from verse 1 down to 14. We see the son of David who saw his father do give born offerings. He came again on the sea, talking about Solomon, and it was to only the people sacrificing high places because there was no house built in the name of the Lord unto those days. And in verse 3, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking at the status of his father David, only him sacrificed one offering in the high places. And in verse 4, and the king went to Gibeon and sacrificed the for the hour's great high place, and time some point of offering Solomon offered upon that altar, and in Gibeon the Lord appeared to him, ask what do you want. And he said, give me wisdom. And the Lord said, I'll give you that which you've asked, even that which you've not asked. In verse 11, and the Lord said unto him, because I have not asked for a long life and all that, said, neither riches and all that, but asked for what? For wisdom. He said, behold, in verse 12, I have done according to thy words. I'm giving thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there is no like thee, no after thee. He said in verse 13, and I've also given that we should not ask for riches and all that. And of course, among all the things and all the ideas, said in verse 14, and if thou walk in my ways and to keep my status, said I will lengthen thy days. 
the Lord will surprise you in this season in Jesus' name. John chapter 11, verse 33 to 45. Jesus therefore saw her weeping, talking about he was growing in the spirit, groaning in the spirit. Said in verse 34 and said, Where do you lay him? Talking about Lazarus. Jesus wept in verse 35 and started here. Jesus therefore again groaning himself, coming to the grave. And of course, he said, You should take off the stone and he did that. He said, He was dead for four days. And in verse 40, Jesus said unto her, said, I know unto you that would this believe that shall see the glory of the Lord. And in verse 41, they took away the stone. And Jesus said, Father, I thank thee for thou hast heard me. That is worship in the midst of chaos, in the midst of dead Lazarus. Jesus called him forth and Lazarus came out of the grave. I see everything dying around you coming alive as you engage the mystery of worship and praise in Jesus' name. Very quickly, we've been trying to look at the subtopic, how to practically walk in jubilations and celebrations as a lifestyle. How do I practically walk in jubilations and celebrations as a lifestyle? And we're looking at by engaging the principles of true worship and praise. Prior to this time, we've seen two points thus far. We saw that by engaging the principles of prayers, that was the first point we saw, another point by engaging the principles of diligent studies that we saw yesterday please you can reference all of the teaching series on this platform you will be blessed in jesus name today but again on how to practically walk in jubilations and celebrations and lifestyle and we're doing on by engaging the principles of true worship and praise this is a conscious celebration appreciation and adoration of god's supremacy for his person and acts in songs in words and in a dance to god Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1 to 18, we saw how Abraham, my father, after the Lord tempted, he passed that temptation. Every temptation God brings you away, I see you coming out of it in Jesus' name. He went to the mountain to sacrifice his only son that he waited for about 75 years there about. First Chronicles chapter 29, from verse 20 to 29, we see David also. He also gathered all the Israelites together and they worshiped the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 20, and David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God, and all the congregation bless the Lord, the God of their fathers, and bow down their heads and worship the Lord and the king. Then it was 21. And they sacrificed sacrifices unto the Lord and offered born offerings unto the Lord. Talking about on the morrow after the day, even the thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs with their drinks offering and sacrifice in abundance for all Israel. Of course, talking about St. David, look at what he said in Psalm 67 from verse 2 7, and of course, scripture. He said, Let the people praise thee, O Lord, let all the people praise thee, O Lord, all nations. Be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. He said in verse 5, Let the people praise thee, O Lord, let all the people praise thee. He said, Then shall the earth yield our increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us in himself. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall be a him. When you worship and praise God, the Lord will tease you with blessings that everyone will be scared of you in Jesus' name. Psalm 119, says, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. That's David, the great worshiper, the great praise. I say, Seven times a day do I worship, do I praise thee because of thy righteousness. Let me ask you, how many times in a week do you actually praise God? Then you are far from getting to the top if you really want to get to the top. Of course, John chapter 4, verse 21. Then the 24, we see Jesus there and uh, the adulterous woman telling her how to worship God in truth and the spirit. He said, Those that worship God or worship Him in truth and the spirit. And in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 47, we see the apostles after Jesus left. They tarried in Jerusalem. They tarried, you know, until the day of Pentecost. What were they busy doing? They were worshiping the Lord in truth and the spirit. And of course, they are king wind from on high, said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. What were they doing? Worshiping and praising the Lord. And suddenly in the air came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and could feed the house, and there was clothing of tongues like a fire, sat of every one of them, and they began to speak with tongues. And of course, people thought that they were drunk, but Peter stood up and said, we're not drunk. We're not drunk, but this is to fulfill the promise of the Father unto us. And of course, he said, at the end of his speech, everyone came to give his life to Christ. He said, and he said about 17, and it shall come to pass in the last day, he said, the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaid, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven. And when they had this, they asked Peter, what can we do? To receive these blessings and he said 
worship the Lord. Let Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And many of them were saved that day. And they gladly received the word and they were living. He said they have all things together in verse 44 and all that believe were together and had all things common. And they sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men as everyone had need. And it was 46 and they continued daily, they made a lifestyle to worship the Lord together. They continue daily with one accord in the temple and preaching bread from house to house. They did their mutual gladness and sing the names of other praising God in verse 47. Having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily as such as should be saved. Praising God and having favor with all the people. So men who worship and praise God give having favor left right. I see that being a portion in Jesus' name. Lastly, let's know that true worship and praise is actually a spirit from the Lord. I take that again. Let's know that true worship and praise is actually a spirit from the Lord. That it's a spirit behind worshiping and praising the Lord. When the spirit comes upon a man, then living a life of worship and praise becomes a lifestyle. And until one makes this principle a lifestyle, joy, rejoicing, jubilation, celebration will be far from such persons and from the habitation that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. But let's also recognize that this spirit of true worship and praise can only come from God's children and not everyone. Meaning, you have to be truly born again. You have to say yes to Jesus and true spirit. If you desire the spirit of worship, if you desire the spirit of praise. It is a beautiful thing to actually praise God. I love worshiping God. I love worshiping God for hours. It is beautiful. You will feel fulfilled. You will feel that's the most exciting thing upon the surface of the earth. The Lord will grant you understanding in Jesus' name. Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 4 said, The Spirit of God is upon me because He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to put liberty to the captives, and the, the opening of the prison to them that are born, said to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are born. Are you born? You can come out today if you truly want to. Said to proclaim, there's a prayer here in verse 2, and the day of vengeance of our God to confirm all that more. So it is the spirit that take away every burden of money, said in verse 3, to appoint unto them that morning and Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of our God, that he might be glorified, said in verse 4, and they shall build old ways, they shall raise up for my desolations, and they shall repair the way cities, desolation of many generations. Of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, when we grasp all things are passed away, all things have become new. You want a new life, a new level of worship, a new level of praise. Don't forget Hebrews 2 and 3. 3 said, how can we escape from a day so great to salvation? So you cannot escape uh, the boredom and the evil and the bitterness and the agony of the earth if you are not saving Christ. If you want to say yes to Jesus, I'm going to pray with you this morning. If you truly want to say yes to Jesus, go ahead. Repeat this prayer after me, Jesus. I come to you this morning and I'm a sinner forgiving my sins. And you come to this morning, I say to die on the third day, you wash from my freedom. Right now, Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. Write me in the middle of the book of life. Grant me a new life. Grant me a life of worship. Grant me a life of perpetual praise to you. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We take two prayers and shut down first prayer, Father. Anoint me for that garment of worship and praise in Jesus' name. Psalm 61, verse 3 said, To appoint unto them that that mountains are going to give up to them pity for washing the oil of joy for money, that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of God, that he might be in my the Lord will find himself in your life in Jesus' name. Join me, let's take this prayer for that garment of worship and praise in the name of Jesus. This is my petition this morning. And write me, Heavenly Father, what the garment of worship and praise as a lifestyle. Thank you for hearing me for Jesus and my prayer. That's prayer, Father. Teach, Father, teach the saints in Nigeria and Africa that mystery and the power of worship and praise in Jesus' name. Psalm 119, verse 164, David said, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of the righteous judgment. And we see a great king that did turn out to be. He also had a son that succeeded him upon his throne, talking about Solomon. If only the saints can know the power behind worship and praise, behaving, he will live a glorious, triumphant life. Join this praise for your father, teach the saints in Nigeria and Africa the mystery and the power of worship and praise. In the name of Jesus, this is our petition this morning, the of God. Teach our saint, teach the saints in Nigeria and Africa the mystery and the power of worship and praise. Thank you for hearing us, my Jesus, and we pray. Join this prayer, share this gospel, 
I will bless you tomorrow, but that this day will be a day of good news. You're going to receive phone call of good news here and there in Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for your time. The Lord reward.